digital registers to understand how they work. There's a lot of great videos about shift registers on YouTube, so I won't be exploring any of those today. We'll be looking at even simpler registers than that. And this here is the simplest one I can think of, namely the buffer register. All it does is store a 4-bit word each time the clock pulses, making it a positive edge triggered device. For sake of simplicity, all the other builds in today's video are positive edge triggered as well. The IC I'm using for this is the 74LS273 octal flip-flop. In this diagram, we see that the clock feeds all four D flip-flops at the same time. I haven't drawn where the Q outputs go, although in a simple as possible computer, they just feed back into the data bus rather than the LEDs that I was using. But as you can see, there's not really any control here. Each word is stored only for the duration of a clock pulse, so the clock functions almost like an obstacle. It would be good to control whether a word is loaded into the register and whether to output it, rather than simply be bound to the clock. Well, here's a start. In the upper right corner, I have a button that loads eight inputs in parallel. That first press, enabled by the clock pulse, cleared out the red lights because I hadn't pressed any of the eight input buttons. So I effectively loaded all zeros into the registers. And yes, that's registers with an S, because here I'm using two register ICs, each four bits. These two are 74LS173 chips. This chip uses D flip-flops, but it offers two active low inputs, which I'm using, as well as two output control pins, which I am not. In other words, with this chip, we can now control whether to store data from the bus and whether to output it back onto the bus. In this particular build, I have grounded the two output control lines, so whatever is loaded is immediately shown in the outputs, which in this case are the LEDs. Let's switch to a view of that with better lighting. And zoom in a little more. Now we can clearly see that pins 1 and 2 of each register I see are the output control pins M and N respectively. We're going to remove all this grounding clutter so that we can trigger the output when we want to. The logic of the output controls is pretty interesting. Before each Q output, there is a three state switch and that when M or N or both is high, the signal to all four three state switches is low, putting them into an open or high impedance state. Thus, the outputs are disabled. It's worth noting that this doesn't affect the flip-flops sequentially. It just determines whether they produce an output or whether the output is enabled. In an actual computer, it determines whether the outputs go to the bus or not. Here you can see the newly added enable button. Because the control input signals are first inverted before that AND gate, I've routed the button to the hex inverter, and its output feeds the M and N of each 74LS173 register. If you look closely, you can see that I've tied them together for each chip. Uh, as we'll see, this enable input is independent of the clock, unlike the load. So I have the clock blinking away, and here is our controlled register, ready to control when we load our 8-bit word and when we want to enable its output. Let's mash some inputs into the registers, shall we? The inputs are now stored in the D flip-flops of both register ICs, but they're not illuminated. And with the push of a button, no clock timing to consider, there we see what is stored in the register's memory as we enable its output. And with no inputs pressed, by pressing the load, we effectively clear the registers. Uh-oh, now the lights came on immediately. Can you guess what happened? I knocked loose that 1K pull-down resistor. I've had a blast cobbling this video together. I hope you enjoyed this brief look at the amazingly elegant logic behind digital computer registers. Take care, and thanks for watching.